Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So DJI has recently launched a brand new microphone system simply called the DJI Mic 2 and they've also launched a brand new lavalier mic. So in today's video we're just going to take a look at it, we're going to unbox it, see what all comes inside the package and talk about everything that's new. Now there are a lot of new enhancements with this microphone system and whether it's worthwhile upgrading if you already own the original mic system, it's going to be up to each individual. Uh, some really nice new features, however, it's got longer battery life. It's now rated for a total of 18 hours compared to 15 hours. It has intelligent noise cancelling, which can be easily turned on and off just by simply pressing a button on the transmitter. Or you can change it in the settings as well. But the nice thing about that is you can just turn it on on the fly even while you're already recording. It's also got 32-bit float audio which is going to be really important for some people and a whole bunch of other little feature and design enhancements. So let's just open it up here and we'll take a quick look. Inside that box we get a little information package. It comes with a quick start guide and the first thing you'll notice right away it comes with this nice new case. And that's compared to the original microphone system that just came with this pouch. And you know, for the most part, this pouch worked just fine. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about it is that the top never really completely closed. I was always worried I was going to lose some of the little components inside there. The only downfall is that it does take up a little bit more room. It's a little bit bulkier, but not by much. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at everything that comes inside. You can see we have the new battery charging case there and uh, everything's inside which we'll open up here in a minute. We have a TRS to TRS cable so this can be connected to different types of cameras including GoPros if you're using something like the media mod. We have USB-C to USB-A for charging and also for updating firmware. And then we have the newly designed windscreens if you're going to be filming outside on a windy day. Personally myself I always just have these attached find it can help prevent popping if you happen to talk right directly into it. And that's everything that comes inside the case. Before we open it up and take a look inside, you can see that there is a slight size difference. It's not overly drastic. Weight-wise, you know, it might be a little heavier, but in the hand you can't really notice any difference weight-wise. But just slightly bigger, you can see it is a little bit longer there. Uh, but it does have a much more premium feel. I'm not sure what kind of material that is. It almost feels like metal, but I don't know if it is. I think it's plastic, but it almost has like an aluminum feel to it. The other thing you're going to notice right away is that we have a locking button right there on the front, whereas the original microphone system didn't have that. You see this one here won't accidentally open up. You actually have to press the button and then it will open up. And just like the original microphone system, one nice feature of it, as soon as you open it up, it's going to go ahead and power all the devices on, which is super convenient. Now we kind of already got a little bit of a preview of the DJI Mic 2 with the Pocket 3. If you ordered the Crater Combo, you actually got one of the transmitters and uh, it's actually a really good sounding microphone system. And the beautiful thing about these new transmitters is that they can connect directly to certain devices via Bluetooth. And that now includes smartphones, and of course the Action 4. And that's actually huge because now you can order these separately. So if you want to order one of the Mic 2 transmitters just to connect to your Action 4, you can buy it separately for like, I think it's like $99. You don't need any transmitter. You can just connect it directly. And it actually sounds really good. In fact, the last couple of videos that I uploaded, there was one for an e-bike. And most recently, the one that I uploaded about flying drones in the winter. They were all recorded on the Action 4 with the DJI Mic 2 connected to it. No cables, no receivers, and it's just so convenient. You just power it on and it automatically connects. You don't have to worry about plugging in any cables or receivers, taking doors off. It just works really, really nice. So that's going to be a game changer for a lot of people, especially if you do moto vlogging. You can have this inside your helmet. No having to worry about cables or making your camera not waterproof anymore. Just a really nice little setup. So if you do upgrade to the new system, you can actually add a second microphone connected to your Pocket 3 as well. So you can see the new transmitter. It's a little bit differently shaped, generally around the same size. But a nice new sleek design. I actually really like that. And a couple of really interesting changes that they've done here is the cold shoe is now built directly into it. With this one, you either had to have one of the adapters plugged in. If you didn't want that, then you had this clip you had to attach, which was, you know, kind of a pain, uh, especially for somebody like me. I'm filming between a smartphone and an action camera all the time. 
and I was constantly having to take that on and off if I was going to clip it to a GoPro and then put it back to a smartphone. So having the cold shoe always there, you can still just remove that little plate there and then attach your smartphone adapter. And the thing I noticed right away there is that that's actually locked in quite a bit. I have no worry that that's going to even pop out. That was an issue that I've had quite a bit with this one. When you go to plug this into a smartphone, I'll just actually show you here. Depending on how you put it in, you can see how you can actually accidentally uncouple it. And uh, there was a couple times this summer I recorded whole videos like 40 minutes, half an hour, only to find out it wasn't connected. And yeah, you know, that's obviously a problem. So this new design is so much better. I'm putting a good significant amount of force on that and it's not coming undone. You have to really push on it to get it to pop out. So that's actually a really great new design improvement. And of course, there's a USB-C adapter as well. So you can use that to connect directly to your Action 4, a laptop, an iPad, anything that takes USB-C. Now, if we take a look at the transmitters and compare them, they're very similar shaped and size. Of course, there's a new design to this one. It's more of a transparent look, which actually I kind of like. But as you can see, the button configuration is a little bit different. But overall, some really nice design changes, especially how they've got that red button there for recording. On this one here, it just labeled record, and it's, you know, you really had to look at it to make sure you're pressing the right button if you wanted to do some recording. And on this one here, you know right away, it's a red button that usually signifies record. Now, as mentioned, these new transmitters are capable of 32-bit float recording. Now, that 32-bit float isn't baked into your video if you have this attached to a camera. Basically, that's going to be for the backup recording. And all that does, it's like kind of like a raw audio file. If you have audio that's clipping or too low, you can make some adjustments when you're editing without actually ruining the quality. So it's not something that everybody's going to use, but it's just nice to have that backup if you need it. And of course, we've got these newly designed wind covers and uh, super important for when you're recording outdoors. And they're just nice and easily attached compared to the old transmitters where you had to kind of line up those little notches. And, you know, that was kind of a pain to do, especially if you were filming outdoors on a cold day, your hands are cold, trying to get everything lined up. Uh, it was kind of inconvenient, whereas this new setup is really nice. Now on the transmitter here, we get some new design changes as well. Uh, first of all, you can see we have this new dial. And that can be used if you're in your settings, you can kind of scroll through things. But more importantly, it allows you to go in by pressing it and you can adjust the gain of the receiver here. Press it again, it's gonna go down to the transmitter and adjust the gain of the transmitter. If we had both transmitters connected, we could press it a third time and it would adjust that other transmitter as well. Uh, we have a larger screen here. I believe the other one was 0.95 of an inch. This one here is 1.1 inch. So just slightly bigger. But of course, when you have a screen that small, any little size improvement is important. With the transmitters, you can also get this in a white version. So if that's something you prefer. Now you can't buy that as a whole kit, I don't believe. I believe it's just if you're ordering the transmitter separately, you can get it in this uh, black or gray color or in white. So it just really depends on what you prefer. Now I'm gonna put the smartphone adapter back on here because they actually have a nice feature. So if we have it plugged to our smartphone, we can actually plug it into USB-C and what that's going to do, it's going to charge the receiver at the same time, but it's also charging the phone. So it's got that nice pass through and you can do that for your action camera as well. If you're using the action Four and you've got the receiver attached to it, you can plug in USB-C that's going to charge the receiver, but it's also going to charge your action Four. And lastly, let's go ahead and take a quick look at their new lavalier that they've launched alongside of it. Now this is compatible with any type of microphone system, so it's not necessarily just for the mic too. If you have the original microphone system there, it'll work just fine with it as well if you want to get a lavalier. Lavaliers are handy because, you know, you can do a little bit more with them. They can be a little bit more discreet. And in some circumstances, you can get better sound out of them. And to use the lavalier, you just plug it in at the top there, just like that. You can put this in a pocket or pin it on the inside of a jacket. And then you just attach that to your collar or shirt. So right now, if we have this connected to a phone or a camera and we're recording, it's just recording the default audio. But we can just do a quick press on the power button. And you can see we now get that little icon on the screen there. I don't know if you can see that. 
but that means that noise reduction is now enabled. And we can just simply turn it off again just by pressing the power button quick. The other thing you'll notice that the light there changes to a more of a yellow color. But the nice thing about that is you can enable that on the fly. So if you're outdoors recording and you know, you're in a fairly quiet environment and you don't need that on, you can just be recording away. And then if you know, the environment all of a sudden gets a little bit noisy for a few minutes, you can just simply enable it, continue recording and then turn it off if you don't need it again. The nice thing about that is you know, usually when you have that kind of noise reduction, it can distort the audio a little bit. So you don't really want to have it on unless you absolutely need to. So there you can just turn it on and off as needed. So definitely a really nice feature. And one nice little feature you can see here when we start recording, uh, if we're going to be recording to the transmitter and we just press the record button, you can see we get this nice big visual representation there that it is recording. We get this big red box around it. When we stop recording, that turns off. And I'm going to turn the other receiver on too. I'll show you how that works. Now you can see we have both receivers on. If I start recording on this one, you can see that the red box just appears around the one that it's recording to. And again, I can turn this one on as well. And now we have two red boxes. So just some really nice new design changes that make it a little bit more intuitive and a little bit easier to use. Well, folks, that's basically it for this video. Just kind of going over what's new. Now, this video isn't a review. I am going to be doing a full review of this once I've had a good amount of time to use it. So stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.